where this is the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God. It's the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God is the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God. The problem is we don't have the originals of the New Testament. What we have are thousands of copies of the New Testament that were made, in most cases, centuries later. We don't have the originals. We have copies made centuries later. These copies that were made centuries later contain numerous mistakes, thousands of mistakes, tens of thousands of mistakes, hundreds of thousands of mistakes. Is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. It's been the core of my research for the past 30 years. At some point I came to the realization that my belief in the inerrancy of the autographs didn't make sense. If God inspired the Bible without error, why hadn't he preserved the Bible without error? I couldn't think of a good answer then, and I still can't think of a good answer now, even though I think I've heard every answer ever proposed. I couldn't any longer believe that God had inspired the originals because I was sure he had not preserved the original. Let me tell you now what I think about this entire situation, which is that, the, that we cannot know whether the Gospels have been preserved accurately through the ages, and I'm going to try and illustrate with you by explaining how it worked. Take the Gospel of Mark. Whenever Mark was written, say it was written in the year 65 or in the year 70, in the city of Rome, say, I don't know where it was made. Whoever wrote Mark put it in circulation and somebody copied the Gospel of Mark. Then somebody copied that copy and somebody copied the copy of the copy. Then somebody copied the copy of the copy of the copy of the copy. And we don't have any of those copies. It's the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. Everybody who copied the text made mistakes. Our first surviving copy of Mark probably dates to around the year 220 AD. That is, 150 years after Mark was first produced. Our first complete copy of Mark comes from the year 350, about 280 years after Mark. We have lots of copies from later times. From thousands of years, a thousand years after Mark, we get lots of copies. When you compare all of these copies with one another, they all differ from one another. And what is striking is that, that the, the earlier you go to look at the manuscripts, the more differences you find. The earliest copies have the most mistakes. What would happen if we found copies that were still earlier? The only evidence we have is the evidence that survives, which suggests that in the early periods of copying, there was the most mistakes made. How many were made the first month, or the first year, or the first decade? How many mistakes were made in the copy of the copy of the copy, which served as the copy of all the copies that we now have? We have no way of knowing because I've worked on this problem for 30 years and I don't know of a way to know and I've never seen a good explanation. You can't argue that, the, uh, that we have lots and lots of copies of Mark and therefore we know what was originally in Mark. These lots and lots of copies are from many centuries after Mark was written. How could we know that these copies stem from a correct copy instead of an errant copy? Our earliest ones are all highly errant. Sometimes you will hear Christian apologists say that the New Testament is the best attested book from antiquity and therefore you can trust it. It's true it's the best attested book from antiquity, but the attestation is all from a thousand years later. It doesn't make sense to say that you can trust it because it's well attested. If the New Testament was well attested, then you could say what the New Testament originally said. Whether you should trust it or not is another question. But the reality is we have lots of late manuscripts of Mark and of every other book of the New Testament. We don't have early ones, and the, er the earliest ones we have are filled with mistakes. Question number five, do archaeologists in history... This is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. ...that uh, the following view is a view of skeptics, that we don't have the originals, we have only copies, that thousands of copies have thousands and ten thousands of mistakes. When he calls that 
And it's the view of non-skeptics. It's the view of every scholar who works in this field, including Craig. Everybody agrees. We don't have the originals. We have thousands of copies. And the thousands of copies have tens, if not hundreds, of thousands of differences among them. Are any of these differences important? Or are they all fluff? Did Jesus say, let the one who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her? It's a wonderful and familiar saying of Jesus, but it's based on a scribal variation that is an error. It was not originally in the New Testament Gospels, as Craig has just told us. Did Jesus say, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Well, does it matter whether Jesus said it or not? Turns out, it's only in a textual variant. It was not in the original New Testament. Did Jesus say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation? He who believes in me and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not will be condemned. It's found only in a textual variant. These are the signs that will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Does it matter if Jesus said it? It certainly matters to the Christian groups in the Appalachian Mountains who practice snake handling as part of their worship services. Did Jesus give the entire Lord's Prayer or just half of it, as in Luke? Does it matter? It depends on which manuscript you read. Or do other textual variants matter? Does it matter whether the doctrine of the Trinity is explicitly taught in the New Testament? The only verse that comes close to teaching it directly is 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. Does it matter if that's in the New Testament? Does it matter whether the Gospel of John ever calls Jesus the unique God or not? It's based on a textual variant. Does it matter whether the Gospel of Luke teaches a doctrine of atonement or not? The view that Jesus died for the sake of others. It depends on a textual variant. Does it matter if Jesus was in such agony before his arrest that he swept blood? It's found in only a single textual variant of the Gospel of Luke. Does it matter that entire words, lines, paragraphs, and pages were left out by some scribes? Does it matter that there are numerous places in the New Testament where scholars cannot decide what the original text said? Does it matter that there are some places where we will never know what the original author said? Does that matter or not? Many evangelical scholars claim that it doesn't matter. But I don't believe them because these scholars devote their lives to studying the Greek manuscripts. Why would they do that if it doesn't matter? Major evangelical seminaries raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for manuscript projects to study these manuscripts. Why would they do that if it doesn't matter? It does matter. Is the Bible a trustworthy, reliable guide? If so, what if we don't know what it originally said? For some people, these facts don't matter. And if you're one of them, well and good. But if you're someone for whom this does matter, then I would urge you to start reading and start thinking about the Gospels of the New Testament as critical scholars have described them. We do believe in the Bible. So it's just, I mean, how obvious could it be that this does not come from God? Your average Muslim believes that the Bible has been corrupted. It was corrupted by the Apostle Paul. It was corrupted at the Council of Nicaea. It was corrupted here. It was corrupted there. Everyone corrupted it. And it's not just the Bible, but all previous scriptures, all scriptures prior to the Quran. They're all corrupted. I see that what we're saying is the truth. And you Muslims, we, we hope that you'll pay attention and reject Muhammad as a prophet. But if this isn't, who is a liar? Who is a liar? Hey, who cares what the Bible says? Because that is not whatever you do. Don't listen to David Wood. Or it says, don't believe in David Wood. He's a liar. You send David Wood. It says, whatever you do, don't listen to David Wood. So this is Muhammad is an antichrist. Who say, oh, you just called Muhammad an antichrist. That would find out. Don't believe that guy. He's an antichrist.